I think one of the best, one of the better games in College World Series history. It was just a nail biter, a little bit of everything. Um, from their side, was just, and Kelly will talk on this, I'm sure it was just hard to get those guys out. They have big swings, they cover the zone. Um, Rothrock, absolute star on the mound, just fighting for her team. Um, on the, this side, it's Kelly Maxwell taking over like probably fourth on, third on, um, shutting these, them down a bit. Some big timely hits, um, really happy for Jada. She's been really trying to help this team offensively. So um, I don't know that I could tell you that I believe that we would be here again, because it's so difficult to get here. And the way we did it was wonderful. It was, we're blessed. We felt that, and we just took advantage of all those blessings. And you are one, too. All right, <laughs> that's that. All right, we'll go to questions. The players, we'll start in the front row right for John. Yeah, hi, guys. John Hoover, uh, All Sooners. Um, for Ella, I'd like you to ask you about the collision when you slid into second base or came down into second base. Kind of what, if you could describe it for me, what happened. And then a half hour later, you're back at the plate, and you're – tying the ball game. And then for Jada, I'd like you to kind of describe that scenario, what that did for you all as a, as a lineup. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> I just was running to second base. I kind of don't really remember a whole lot of it just because of just like the, I guess the adrenaline rushing. Um, but just doing whatever to get to second base. And I know my team's got my back. Um, just working on passing the bat and just, yeah, passing the bat to the next teammate. Yeah, I think it really fired her, fired us up just to see her start the inning off of the line drive to the gap like that. Um, our team immediately started praying over both of the players because they both went down so fast. Um, it was kind of scary, but I'm glad everything was um, good for both players. And I think that um, kind of started a rally for our team just to continue to, to pass the bat. All right, we'll go front row left to Ryan. Ryan Aber from the Oklahoma and uh, Jada uh, wanted to over here. <laughs> wanted to ask you about that. Obviously, the the home run and not only that, but the conversation you had with Alyssa uh, right before the inning. What was she telling you? And then how did that at bat progress? Is there you know working you outside uh, through you know the first three pitches before you get another one? Yeah, I I had been a little frustrated all game. Obviously, I just want to do anything to help my team. And I wasn't really able to do that. And Brito, you know, she slowed me down and she prayed over me. And she was just like, surrender it all. Don't, don't try to control anything, like just go for it. Like, no matter what, I'm not justified by whatever the at-bat is. So even though I hit a home run, Jesus still loves me. If I would have struck out, Jesus still loves me. So regardless, and I think that just really just put me into my foundation. It was awesome. And then the at-bat itself. Oh yeah, I was just, I was taking first pitch because the other pitch, or the other time I got jammed and popped up. So I was just gonna take my time, really get a pitch that I really wanted to see. And I just saw it middle and I knew that I had needed to stay through the ball. Um, and going around the bases, I just lost it, started crying because I just knew immediately like just Brito and just the presence that I felt with um, God. And it's just, it was incredible, an incredible feeling. All right, we'll go right side, uh, front row to Jenny. Yeah, I got two questions. First, Jada, after you celebrated with your teammates, uh, you and Patty hugged for quite a long time. I'm wondering if you can just talk me through anything that was said, just your thoughts and emotions in that moment. And then Kelly, to have thrown as many pitches as you threw today, how did you sort of maneuver through what, you know, I'm sure at some point you realized this is probably going to be a long day, just mentally, physically, how you came through that? Yeah, I mean, throughout the game, Coach just kept telling me how much she, that she believed in me. And I feel like I kind of kept letting her down in a way or letting this team down in a way just because I was just doing things that I just wouldn't really normally do. And just to be able to hug her in that moment, I'm not even really sure what she said, but I just felt just like I was crying into my mom's shoulder mm -hmm. <laughs> in that moment. Um, it just such relief while hugging her. Um, I mean, I knew today was going to be tough. Um, I knew coming out the gate, I didn't kind of have my best stuff, and I knew I was going to make an adjustment uh, middle of the game. And I think I just flipped the switch, chose my fighter, um, mm -hmm. and went to war. I think just being able to attack and go out 
without a fight. All right, we got front row left, Ryan. Uh, TRA, through the first three innings, it had been a point where this whole two games, Florida kept banging them over the wall. It, what, what was it for you guys to be able to stay calm and not press at the play? I know you've been down tons of time through your career, but it, it was basically eight straight innings of that. Today was different. We knew we were going to fight um, from the gate. Um, they came out and punched first. We came back and punched again. And I think that was just kind of punching back um, the entire game, just a dog fight. But just the presence of this team today was different. Um, all the way around, you can tell that there was no press. There was no anxiety. There was no fear. There was nothing. It was just us and this team and God. And we felt that through the stands, through just everybody. Our hands are up. We know that we're looking up always just – there's, there's something different. These smiles, there's something different going on with the Sooners right now. Here we go. Front row left. Um, Brady Vernon, Softball America, just for Jada and Tierra, just going off of that point, kind of what was like the reset this morning in conversations amongst yourselves? Well, our reset, I don't know if anyone knows this, but every single time we're in the World Series, I jump on Tiari's bed and says, it's game day! <laughs> like, literally every single morning that we play. And the I yell and the jump alarm. on her bed and, like, shake her. The minute the alarm goes off. Yes. Yeah. The minute the alarm goes off. So just staying in our daily routine, you know, and just keeping the smiles up, just saying the same that we are always doing, even though we lost doesn't mean that we need to change anything, not necessarily reset. We just got to go back and play our game. Oh, we have time for two more for the players. Front row left. Jaina Bartle, The Athletic. Ella, I talked to your parents after the game, and I have a few que two questions. I asked them about the sweet baby barbecue sign. I want to know a little bit more about that nickname, and I want to know just, you know, if you have a, a big game like today, how often are you looking out there and, and just taking the energy? Um, so the name Sweet Baby is actually from my 12U travel ball coach, Tony Mascarenas. And I guess it was just something my dad said, and she was kind of making fun of him for it. And that name stuck out. So it's been with me. And sorry, can you repeat the second question? Just when you have a game like today, especially as a freshman at the plate, just coming in really clutch, how often are you taking in the energy from the crowd and just relying on your teammates to carry you through? My teammates got my back, and I know everything that we all do, we're all for each other. And that's what... I guess drives me is just doing everything for my team and that's came in today so love everything about them all right we're gonna have a second row <laughs> left now daniel homrock oh you daily kelly what was just that adjustment you made after the third inning after ford hit that third home run um i sat down with coach rocha and we just kind of had a conversation of kind of what was going on and kind of what needed to happen i think i just took it personally, honestly, and I just knew this team was going to fight back and I was going to try to keep them in as long as we could. All right, one last question for the players front row right here. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, you guys are the two seed, Texas the one seed. Uh, do you feel like y'all's team will be able to prove a point and do you feel like Texas is at y'all's level? Uh, I don't think we're trying to prove any point here. Um, this year has been hard, um, but we deserve to be here. And I think just staying within us and knowing we have a God that serves us and we're going to go out here and we're going to give it our all. All right, that'll do it for questions for players. Thanks, players. All right. Front row left, James. James Hale, OKC Sports Radio, Oklahoma City, uh, 105.3. Uh, Patty, Jada's been in so many big games, but she's kind of scuffling in this game, and you did talk to her. What were you thinking as Jada came to the plate? She's a good – she would be a phenomenal softball coach, and so she knows how to coach herself. So sometimes she has a list of, like, okay, I'm going to bump, but maybe I'll slap, maybe I'll chop. I don't know. It goes on and on. Like, she has so many ideas. And actually, the game yesterday, she wanted to bunt, and I said, no, you need to swing. And then TR, she got out, Tiara hit the home run. So I'm thinking, why am I telling her what to do? Because she knows exactly what we need and how to do it. So that's really it, is saying you've got the freedom to be you. you you've been in this for, you know, you've been doing this for three years now. You know what we need. So 
I didn't ask for a home run. It just uh, I didn't think it was going to go that far either. I mean, it was really close, but Jada's really been fighting to help this team, and she gets really frustrated when she doesn't. And it does affect us a little bit. And she's really, she did a really great thing last night, brought the team together and kind of apologized for stepping away from them. And I felt her ownership, becoming a woman, just stepping up for this team today. All right, we go front row right to Jesse. Jesse Crittenden, OU Insider. Patty Kelly talked about it a little bit, a little bit of a, a tough start to the game. Florida takes the lead, but I mean, it seemed like midway through that game, she really found a rhythm, grinded it out, goes all eight innings, just especially after Saturday. What does a game like this today for her mean? And also just maybe what did you see change in her after that tough start? Yeah, I, I can't tell you how happy I am for Kelly Maxwell right now. Um, I don't think she's out to try to prove anything, but she knows she's a good pitcher. And when she when it was getting roughed up a little bit, I think she just kind of, what you got with Jen Roach, it was kind of like something in her that's like, stop, I got to stop this. I got to be more competitive. You could feel it coming out, and we could feel it as a team. And I think that kind of helped rally the offense as well, because we were just, they'd score, we'd score one, they'd score two. It just kept going back and forth. It's really frustrating when you're on that side, but you got to just trust your pitcher and your pitching coach and we all do, and um, the fact that Kelly's going to be playing in a national championship game is one of the highlights of our season. All right, we got a second yeah. row right to Myron. You kind of hit uh, Myron Patton, OKC Sports Radio. You kind of hit on this. I was going to ask you, did you ever think of taking her out when she was kind of struggling? No. But also, with all these seniors up here, Ella Parker hits the big home run. Is she, are you kind of looking at some of these youngsters as the next generation as – these guys leave, your TRs, your Jada Coleman, yeah, and so forth. Definitely. We need them. They're, they're doing some great, great things offensively. I think, you know, you just know the big names, but now you're really learning. Color Sweet Baby, not Ella Parker. And uh, Cassie Pickering's doing a great job. It was very clutch for us this season and, and today as well. Um, there's a lot of pitchers that are young that are watching and learning. Um, and waiting for their, their number to be called. So um, the future is going to continue to be bright, even without these 10 seniors. Right, we got front row left to Ryan. Ryan Aber from the Oklahoma. And Patty, you talked about players waiting for their number to be called. Avery's has been called the last mm -hmm. couple of days. And wanted to ask you about the, the way that she's handled, uh, you know, being in the lineup the last couple of days, and especially that uh, sixth inning at bat today. Yeah, that was so big. Um, you know when you have a player and like you, you, she's kind of that slapper and then you got Alina who's that big hitter. So they just keep going back and forth and maybe that's not the smartest thing to do um, because you just keep sharing at bats. But um, she's been waiting for this moment. She practices hard. She does everything right at practice and just waiting for her name to be called a little more often. And she showcased herself big time today. I don't think anybody was expecting that rope down the line that turned into a double. I mean, she has she was really, really big time hits for us um, the last couple of days. So Alina's sitting there doing the best she can to, you know, like we're trying to play for her and get her back on the field. This girl's been waiting her whole life. These guys are waiting their life to be in this position. Um, so hopefully we get um, a dose of Alina as well. But Avery has just gotten that opportunity and made the most of it. Really helped our team win today. All right, we got front row right to John. Yeah, Patty, uh, I wanted to ask you about Ella. I mean, big baby. Uh, <laughs> good, good, good. Sweet baby. Sweet baby. Did I say don't, big baby? Don't call her oh big baby. Such call her idiot. sweet baby. <laughs> big hitter is what I meant to say. <laughs> sweet baby. Goodness gracious. <laughs> So you're standing out there over her at the, at the second base. Kind of describe that scene. Uh, was she out of it? Was she hurting? Was she talking to you? And then um, her, yeah. her ability to come back uh, a couple innings later and get that hit. Yeah, she was talking, but she didn't want to move. I think her bell was rung pretty hard. It was a little bit scary because she's pretty tough, and she just did not want to move. So that 
first thing you're like, did something really happen? She started to move around a little bit. We took her helmet off and then she slowly got herself up, but she, her bell was wrong. Both got hit pretty hard. I, I need to go back and look at it more because it happened so fast. But we had our doctors right here in the dugout waiting to see her and gave her the okay. She passed all the protocols, all the tests for concussion protocols. So um, she, she wanted it. I, we asked, are you okay? Can you, you know, you, I know you got clearance. Are you good? She goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Get me back in there. All right. What was the question? Uh, her later, yeah. Uh, yeah. Play with the yeah. It's coming to, do we bring in Ella? I look at her and I start asking her again. She's like, I'm good. I'm good. She already had the bat helmet. She was ready to go. So yeah, that's her. Sweet baby. Sweet baby. We have time for a few more and we're done. Uh, Ryan, front row left. Uh, Texas for about the thousandth time the last three years. What, what goes into the prep for a team that you've played so many times at this stadium? Hi. Uh, we know each other very well. Kind of feel like we're the underdogs this year. Um, and that's okay. It's good for us. Uh, we had to really fight our way through here. Um, and I'm proud of this group and how they did it. And we've got some really good momentum. We know each other very well. I don't know that there are a lot of secrets. It's just gonna, it's gonna be an absolute battle. All right, last question. Jenny, front row right. Patty, you've had feisty players over the years. I mean, I think about somebody like Kelly Breitch back on that 2000 team, but Jada is kind of that way for you guys. I'm imagining it maybe hasn't always been easy between you and her, but how have you, how have you both gotten to this point, and what did you say, if anything, to her in that moment when you hugged her after the game? She doesn't remember, and I don't remember, except really um, <laughs> Jada came in. She's, she, this girl has more energy than anyone I've ever seen in my life, and she uses every single ounce of it. And when it's empty, it's empty. It's gassed. I mean, she lives life really, really hard in a good way. Sometimes her and I, and she'll tell you, we've butted heads pretty good. I've had to discipline her a few times. Um, she always responds, you know. One thing I love about Jada Coleman is she is so honest. And sometimes so honest, you're like, okay, don't say that out loud. But <laughs> so honest that I, I know what I'm working with. So honest about our program that she will tell me things that maybe aren't going well so honest that she'll tell me when no one else will. And so I just respect the heck out of her. I think she is an absolute elite athlete. And if you just knew her, I mean, she's real, she's full of energy and that's really how she lives every day. She's like that at practice. So when she's tired, she's tired. So we need these nighttime games. We need more rest and recuperation from this because she plays hard, she lives hard.